Chow, Mabuhay. You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. Just a few days more and we will enter the Holy Week of the Lord's Paschal Mystery. How have you been preparing for it? The gospel that we would hear gives us a glimpse of Jesus' sense of purpose. In one event before His Passion, He told His disciples, I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Jesus embraced His purpose which comes from the Father. He would offer His life so that all of us could be reconciled with God. By the supreme act of love on the cross emanating from His clean heart, Jesus gives glory to the Father's name. First reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The Word of the Lord. Oh 
22nd reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The Word of the Lord. Jesus' clean heart. On this uh, fifth Sunday of Lent, let us go to the heart, the heart of Lent, which is the heart of Jesus. And in our times, I think it is important to recover the biblical meaning of the heart, especially the heart of Jesus. Let us go to the heart of the matter, especially at this time when uh, the heart is often used as a symbol of sheer sentimentalism. As a result of that, we see, sadly, even in the area of spirituality, a lot of uh, external observances, or what some people might even call superficiality, that misses the heart, the heart of the matter. In the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, God presents himself once again as the God of the covenant. The covenant relationship between God and the people Israel is not just a matter of transaction. A covenant relationship involves two parties from their most intimate and sacred selves. It is a relationship from the heart. God, through the prophet Jeremiah, summarizes this relationship between God and Israel with the simple words, I will be your God and you will be my people. I will be yours and you will be mine. Unfortunately, according to Jeremiah, the people Israel did not take to heart the covenant relationship. We can even say it did not enter their hearts. It was not interiorized. And so they took the laws of God, the commands of God, lightly. Of course, they observed the external rituals, the sacrifices, and all of these things. But then, when it comes to fidelity, the giving of self, the engagement of the heart in this covenant relationship, they failed. So, through the prophet, God promised that he would put his law in the hearts of the people so that they will get to know him from their hearts. And this is the gift of God. It is God himself that will transform the hearts of Israel, making it the depository of his law, of his word, so that from their hearts they could relate and respond to the very heart of God. In the second reading from the book of, or the letter to the Hebrews, we see Jesus, the high priest, who will offer to God the complete, the perfect, and most pleasing sacrifice. The author reveals to us the heart of Jesus. It is a heart that prays to the Father. Prayers and supplications emanating from his heart. But it is a very human heart. 
even if Jesus had the heart of the Son of God, He also became human and so possesses a very human heart. So His prayer to the Father is accompanied by loud cries, by tears. His heart, His human heart, revealed His anguish. But this anguish, especially in the face of his death, this anguish of the heart became a prayer of trust and obedience to the Father. So we have the heart of the Son of God united to a human heart. As a perfect covenant, the heart of God and the human heart of Jesus beating together in obedience to God and the love of God for humanity, all contained in the heart of Jesus. And so according to the letter to the Hebrews, this heart of Jesus that was made perfect through his obedience as a human being to the Father became the source of salvation to many brothers and sisters. Salvation because it was a heart of obedience and a heart of compassion, the heart of a covenant. And from that heart, we have been saved. Please, let us look at the clean and pure heart of Jesus. Proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus' clean heart. I propose that we go to the heart of uh, the passion of Jesus Christ, which is in his heart. That's where it begins. In the first reading, we see how God is the God of the covenant with Israel. But the covenant is not just a superficial transaction. It is not just a set of rules or contracts. It involves the hearts of the parties 
in the covenant relationship. I will be yours. I will be your God. And you will be mine. You will be my people. Unfortunately, Israel remained on the external observances. So God, out of his bountiful love, will place his law in the heart of Israel. So that from the heart, from within, they will develop a relationship of fidelity with God who is faithful to them. In the second reading, the heart of Jesus is presented to us by the letter to the Hebrews. It is a divine heart because he is the Son of God. And so it is a heart always turned to the Father in obedience. But it is also a human heart that prays, that is filled with fear and anguish. But in his human heart, he learns how to be obedient also to the Father. And so in the heart of Jesus, we have the covenant fulfilled, the heart of God and the human heart in full harmony. And when his human heart was perfected by what he suffered in obedience, he became the source of salvation for all of us, a new covenant in the heart of Jesus. In the Gospel from the Gospel of St. John, we see the curiosity, I hope it was a healthy curiosity, on the part of people who approached Philip, said, we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. But what do they want to see? Do they want to see his looks or uh, his long hair? Uh, they, they want to see how he, how he moved, how he walked or what? What did they want to see? We. How about us? When we want to see someone, what are we interested in? Jesus, in response to this request that people uh, see him, talked about his heart, especially the heart that is facing his death. He revealed that his heart understands what he is going through in his passion and crucifixion. He likens himself to a grain that will fall to the ground and dies so that it will bear much fruit. In his heart also, he finds a lot of anguish. He is troubled. But who, is not, who will not be troubled when you know that you will be put to a, to a hostile and humiliating and violent death? But then his heart also says, I will not ask my father to save me. I will not ask the father to stop this moment. For in his heart, he knew his purpose. My purpose for coming is precisely for this hour. It causes me anguish, but this is also a, an hour of fulfillment. And I will face it. His heart is ready to jump into this moment, for at that moment, he will be fulfilling his mission, his covenant with the Father, and he will give glory to the Father. So the heart of Jesus, he tells the people, this is his heart, a heart of obedience, a heart of, of pain, but a heart that is made perfect by glorifying God and saving brothers and sisters. Did the people who were curious about Jesus see his heart? Brothers and sisters, what do we see in Jesus? Are we ready to look into his heart so that we can also look into our hearts from the eyes of Jesus? Remember, Jesus during his ministry condemned a type of spirituality, a type of, uh, of uh, pleasing God that is 
just an external show. But in their hearts, those who did these external observances in their hearts, they were not obeying God. They were not compassionate to their neighbors. They just wanted to be seen, to be admired. They become self-righteous. Jesus invites us to go into our hearts and may our hearts be transformed into His clean and pure heart. The Word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. We have reached uh, the final installment of our series on the wilderness. During the previous Sundays, we reflected on the respective wilderness experiences of Abraham, the Israelites, David, and Elijah. From them, we realize that the wilderness is a space of encounter, inviting persons to become selfless, to mature in relating with God and one another to remember God's goodness, and to listen with openness to God, to the movements of creation, and to ourselves, our frustrations and aspirations. From their experiences, we learned that the wilderness is a preparation for the freedom that God offers to us. And this is why in the wilderness, one needs to decide. Friends, Jesus too had to make a decision when he was in the desert. Now, according to the accounts of Jesus' temptations by the devil, he chose God's word over bread or temporal satisfaction. He chose to believe that God is true to his word, which does not need to be tested. He chose to worship God alone. But let us also highlight what happened after. The devil left Jesus, brothers and sisters, because Jesus was firm and deliberate in his response to the devil's temptations. On one occasion, Pope Francis pointed out that Jesus never negotiated with the devil. This is because what the devil offers will not lead us to freedom. He wants us to be unsure of ourselves and doubtful of God. Take, for example, how big he began his first temptation. If you are the Son of God, friends, by addressing Jesus in this manner, the devil wanted him to question his identity in relation to God. That's why the first temptation is for Jesus to command that the stones become loaves of bread. In other words, Prove yourself, Jesus. He was pushing Jesus to dissociate himself from God. You can do it on your own, Jesus. Then the second temptation is for Jesus to throw himself down from the parapet of the temple. Jump and let us see if God really cares for you. The devil wanted Jesus to test God and to go against God's word. The last temptation captures the real motive of the devil. He wanted Jesus to worship him, a clear sign of the devil's corruption. You will get all the riches in the world, but worship me first. It is about controlling Jesus. Thankfully, Jesus did not fall into the trap of the devil. If the offer leads you to be disconnected from God, if it leads you to go against God's word, if it leads you to being controlled by the devil, it will not lead you to freedom. On the contrary, you become a slave. So when faced with temptations in the wilderness of daily life, let us follow Jesus' handling of his own temptations. Jesus is firm in his belief in God's word. 
He is confident about who He is. He trusts God. Friends, may our decisions lead us to choose God and the real freedom that He offers. Pope Francis teaches us, Let us pray. O oh God, give us the grace to handle our wilderness experience and the temptations we face every day as Jesus did. And should we fail, send us your angels to console and encourage us that we may finally choose you and attain true freedom. Amen. Have a meaningful Sunday. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how can we make our discipleship of Jesus a matter of the heart and not just of external observance without the heart? Paano natin magagawa na ang ating pagsunod kay Kristo ay magmula sa ating puso at hindi lamang panlabas na pagsunod? The second point is, how can we form the hearts of young people to be a place of covenant with God and neighbors? Paano natin mahuhubog ang kalooban ng mga kabataan para doon sila makipagtipan sa Diyos at sa kapwa? Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed. Sing hop, sing hop.